to Krishna International Magazine Show. I am your host, Krishna Opfer Varela. Tonight's show will be the power of equity and opportunity. And I have a pleasure to have here with us tonight, Mr. John Santiago, the ER doctor from Boston Medical Center, the Massachusetts State Representative, the captain of US Army Reserve, and the candidate for our mayor of Boston. John Santiago, good evening. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you, Krishna, for the invitation. It really is an honor and a pleasure to be with you and uh, happy to partake in this discussion. Thank you so much. So let's start with your background. <laughs> so yeah. uh, how, uh, how did you get to the medicine, to the politics and the public service? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it, it might sound like a variety of different hats and <laughs> pathways, but I think they all share a common thread and that is our, my belief in serving people, particularly those communities most underserved. And that started with medicine. You know, I was born in Puerto Rico and I came to Boston at an early age. And here is where I saw firsthand health disparity in my own family. I had an uncle who became infected with HIV, who ultimately passed from AIDS. And at a young age, that struck me as not right, not just, because his only crime was that he was just a poor Latino man, right? And although he lived just a, a stone throw away from some of the best hospitals in the country, he didn't get the care he needed. And from that experience, that would launch a career in medicine and public health that would take me all around the world. After college, I'd spent five years living abroad. I did a couple of years as a Peace Corps volunteer, spent some time living in Latin America and Africa and Europe, and decided I want to be a physician and serve communities. And so I came back to Boston in 2010. I went to medical school. I got my dream job at Boston Medical Center where I work today. I still work the, the weekend shift at Boston Medical Center Emergency Room. But what I've come to learn there in the emergency room, particularly at a place like Boston Medical Center, is the reason why people show up, it has something to do with what's happening in their community, right? The lack of educational, economic opportunities, that will ultimately manifest into an emergency room visit. And so over the course of my time there, no matter how many patients I take care of, I'm frustrated with the system that creates those situations in the first place. So in 2018, I decided to run for office and I was fortunate to win. Uh, so I've been a state representative for the past two plus years. Wow, that is a great story because and then we can see all the connection between uh, ER and uh, being a doctor and uh, trying to be a mayor because uh, it seems like you like your things to be done. It's like you think about solution. <laughs> yeah, no, I think... Listen, in the emergency room, if you don't solve the problem, if you don't move quickly, if you don't act with urgency, the patient will experience a negative health outcome. And at times that might mean death. And so my life has really been about getting things done. And how does that happen? Whether it's in the hospital or whether that's out in the community or whether that's in the legislature. So for the past two plus years, we've been very active in the legislature, particularly in the era of COVID-19. As you know, Krishna, COVID-19 has been a crisis that has upended everything that we know, our healthcare system, our schools, our economy. And I've been very honored to take a leadership position, not just in the legislature, but in the hospital. During COVID-19, I doubled my hours in the emergency room. I've been on this, the, the COVID-19 committee at the state house, really working to make sure that our patients, my patients and my community, particularly those most underserved, have the care and the services they need and you know, I, you know, I'll give you an example, Krishna. Right now, you probably know that there's a vaccine issue, right? Particularly in communities of color, uh, communities that I represent and that I treat. Mm -hmm. So in that spirit of wanting to get things done and to being a person of action, you know, I partner with a couple of groups and doctors of color to really create our own mobile clinic to go out there and vaccinate those hardest to reach population. And we're approaching about a thousand vaccinations um, by, uh, by the end of this week. Wow, this is an incredible job. So we are so proud for everyone that is works in the hospital, especially on the ER that uh, serve our community during this pandemic. So um, it's unbelievable. So as an ER doctor at BMC, how have you seen that um, COVID uh, vaccine uh, impact Boston and how can we get out of this crisis? What do you think that we're gonna, how are we gonna get out of this crisis? Yeah, well, it's, you know, this crisis is a, a very complicated one. It's, it's big, it's diverse. Uh, it's gonna take a lot to get us out of this crisis, but we're gonna need strong 
public leadership, you know? And that's what I'm, uh, that's what I'm gonna bring to the table as the next mayor of Boston. But right now, what we need to do is we need to vaccinate as many people as soon as possible. Because as you know, Krishna, there are cases rising in Massachusetts and in Boston. You know, we have states like Michigan where cases are rising and they're, they have to probably likely shut down here in the coming weeks. You know, we also have a situation now where we have these new variants coming into play. You know, these are mutations uh, in the virus that create a more transmissible virus and at times could be a potentially more lethal virus. And so we're really in a race against these variants and these new cases to get as many people has vaccinated as soon as possible. And we're doing, relatively speaking, compared to other states, a good job if you look at you know total numbers. But my concern is about the people left behind, the poorest people, those underserved communities. We have to make sure that we're getting to those communities. And that's why as a state representative and as a physician that we are, I am targeting those communities to get them vaccinated. Yes, especially because uh, there is a lot of misinformation out there. So that's why we have, we must to bring our truth out there. So uh, people has a lot of uh, hesitancy, hesitation in taking the vaccine. They not trust and a lot of times they don't trust the institution, but they trust the doctors. That's why it's so important to us to send the right message to them and our truth out there. And it's important that we do so with uh, a level of cultural competency and linguistic competency. We have to speak to them in their language, uh, talk to them in ways that will impact them. Um, you know, you know, when I'm at Boston Medical Center, the fact that we have so many translators on that we could just call, get them on, uh, on speed dial to have a conversation with the patient. They're not just translators, they're also cultural brokers, right? And mm -hmm. some of the work that I'm doing on the community is really about that. We've created programs that are not, you know, just about linguistically or culturally appropriate, but they're also about going to them and making sure that they have access to the vaccine. Because my guess is if you can present, um, you know, an opportunity for a person to get vaccinated in some of these hard hit communities, that they will likely get vaccinated, you know? And so yes, vaccine hesitancy is an issue, but I'm really concerned about right now in my role as a state representative and as a physician, it's like, let's bring the vaccine to them. Let's get people vaccinated as soon as possible. That's true, totally true. So uh, can you describe more, so uh, how you would tackle equity in the healthcare and rich communities in need? Yeah, you know, that, that is the, the thesis of why I'm running to become the next mayor of Boston. Look, just to give you, I mean, it's no surprise to people living in Boston that we experience a tremendous amount of inequity in the city, not just with respect to wealth, but also health, housing, you name it. In the state representative district that I currently have right now, it goes from Copley Square to Nubian Square. There's a life expectancy difference of 30 years. 30 years in a mere walk of about 30 minutes. That is shameful. And so first and foremost, we have to recognize this. And I think we've done a, a good job of doing that, but we have to attack it and we have to think comprehensively about it. You know, I'm a big believer in trying to address the social determinants of health. That's a term that we use in medicine and public health all the time. It's the idea that current health outcomes, they're largely predicated on what's happening in your community, right? That lack of educational, economic opportunity, the violence, the trauma that some of these communities are facing. So we have to get to the root causes of these issues, right? We have to make sure that every child in the Boston public school system has an opportunity to succeed, has a world-class education. You know, We have to make sure that families can stay in the houses that they rent and that they own. They have to make sure that they have you know, up, um, job, um, opportunity when it comes to employment. We have to have a very comprehensive response in order to get this done. And that's what I've been fighting for at the State House. And I'm honored that you know, for the, my first two years in office, we were a part of what I would argue was the most productive and progressive legislative session in recent memory. You know, we passed a landmark education reform bill. We passed some housing zoning reform bills. We invested in our community to get things done. We're gonna need more of that at the city level. And that's what I'm committed to doing as the next mayor of Boston because we can't afford the status quo. You know, The status quo is quite literally uh, hampering us from living up to our potential. Thank you so much. And we trust you because actually everything that you promise to the community, you've done. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing. So thank you for that. Yeah, well, we're, 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 we're a believer in getting things done, you know? And I think, you know, in all spheres, whether it's the housing sector, transportation. I mean, I think about the community that I serve. I mean, transportation equity is a big deal to me because 
some of our poorest communities, they don't have the same accessibility to the trains, to the subway, to bikes. And so to think that they were going to cut one of the buses, bus 43 in my community, a bus that serves so many people in BHA housing, you know, poor people, more elderly, black and brown folks, like the people who live across the street from me, we galvanized a community to get together to stop the, the governor and the administration from cutting that line. So my work has really been about, you know, how do we address uh, inequity? You know, I'm not just a COVID-19 doctor out there treating patients. You know, I have an understanding of the intersectionality of all these issues and wanting to address the root causes of it, you know? And I'll give you an example. At BMC, when I take care of a person who's been shot by a gun, you know, it's a very emergent situation. It's a life-threatening issue. My job is to stabilize the patient. But literally within minutes, we have someone from the Violence Intervention Advocacy Program come who's there because we know that the person there is likely there as a result of what's happening in their communities, right? And so our job is once the person's medically stable is to touch base with them, say, listen, you know, how do we improve your uh, chances of getting a job, getting educated, getting a driver's license? How do we put you on a path so that can, you know, uh, to, to get you to achieve all the opportunity and potential that you can? And so at, at Boston Medical Center, we understand the big picture. We want to address the root causes, you know? Ultimately, I want to be at a place where the emergency room doesn't need to be there except for real life emergencies. Um, yeah. The fact of the matter is what I'm seeing a lot of times is, you know, chronic health issues, chronic high blood pressure, you know, um, issues that manifest from chronic, uh, you know, smoking alcoholism. But in my heart of hearts, I'm a public health guy who wants to get the root cause. Yeah, totally, totally agreed. Thank you so much. So uh, we're going to take a small break, John, so we can watch that amazing video that we you did. So uh, and then we'll be right back. So thank you so much for watching Krishna International Magazine show. Tonight you are watching The Power of Equity and Opportunity. And our guest tonight is John Santiago. We'll be right back. My name is John Santiago, and this is my story. Walking home from my overnight shift in the ER is often a time to reflect, to think about my patients and try to understand why they ended up here. The daughter in the grips of substance use, a homeless family looking for shelter, the young man, another victim of gun violence. And now, the same families impacted by COVID-19. I've come to learn that my patients are a reflection of Boston. Their stories speak to our greatest challenges, disparities in health and wealth, rising rents, struggling schools. I've spent my life in service tackling these very issues. I'm running for mayor to lead Boston through this crisis, to recovery rooted in equity and opportunity because I know what it's like to grow up in subsidized housing, to attend Boston public schools, to wonder if my family will be given a fair shot. These experiences shaped me and inspired me to give back. After college, I joined the Peace Corps to help those less fortunate. I took an oath to serve in the army and deployed overseas. I came back to Boston to work as an ER doctor and I'm on the front lines fighting COVID-19. My commitment to service is what compelled me to first run for public office and every day I wake up ready to serve the people of Boston. But our city is now at a turning point. The pandemic has exposed our vulnerabilities. This moment requires a leader who sees each and every one of you. And as your next mayor, I will lead Boston through this crisis and to a recovery by building bridges, by listening and seeking to understand one another, by working together. We will rise above this difficult moment better than before. Because like the ER, I don't only see challenges in Boston. I see hope and courage amidst this crisis. I know how resilient we are, every day fighting for a better city, and I'm betting on us. Now let's write the next chapter of our Boston story. Hello everyone, you are watching Krishna International Magazine show. Tonight's show is the power of equity and opportunity, and my guest is John Santiago, our candidate for our Mayor Boston, uh, our ER doctor from Boston Medical Center. So John, thank you so much for sharing with us this video. That is fantastic. It's like so emotional, actually. <laughs> well, no, thank you. I, you, know, I, I had a, you know, we had a, a great time producing it and you know, writing the script together, but I, I really wanted to, it to make sure that the video really speak to why I was running for office and that you know, what I see in the emergency department is really a reflection of what I see in the community. And you know, that's why I ran for state representative the first time, and that's why I'm running for mayor. 
this year. Mm -hmm. It's a simple video, but it's, it's full, it's rich of uh, your story. Tell us everything about your background and uh, the things that you like to do. So John, so other than a COVID pandemic, so what, what is the greatest challenge that you see the next mayor will need to face or to solve? When, when I look at the greatest challenges that Boston has, there are challenges that have been there for a long time, but there are challenges that need to be addressed right now, and we don't have time to wait any longer. Uh, I'm particularly, you know, talking about the education system and the fact that Boston public school system has been, you know, not doing the work that they need to do to make sure our kids are getting a world-class education. You know, here we are, you know, in the mecca of healthcare, the mecca of education here with some of the best world-class institutions that surround us. But if you're a Boston Public School student, you're not getting those opportunities, you know. I'm part of a program called the Val Victorian Project. And the idea was that um, the, the, the organization was founded a couple of year, years ago based on uh, an article that was written by the Boston Globe that said, you know, listen, they followed a number of Val Victorians that graduated from Boston Public Schools. And they found that, that many of them weren't living up to the potential that they could you know, many of them, either they went to college, but if they went to college, they dropped out soon thereafter because they weren't prepared for it, you know? And it's a shame that in our school, our Boston public school system, that we can't provide the education, the resources, and the opportunity that they need, you know? I think about our school system now, where 70% of the children are poor, you know, we're approaching a place where almost half of them are Latino. I see myself in those Boston public school children, and education has been my lifeline. It's what helped me to escape my station in life, to do something that I want to do, whether it's medicine, public health, community, community organizing, or now politics, right? And I want to make sure that every child in Boston has that. I want to make sure that we have universal pre-K, that we're addressing this achievement gap that for too long has, uh, has been part and parcel of the Boston public school system. And that needs to stop right now and I'm committed to doing that. That is amazing. So we all need this opportunity you need a, a country yeah. and a state that is more equitable because a lot of time people get confused about uh, equality and equity. So uh, it's important that uh, you think about equity. <laughs> yeah, you know, equity has that justice component as well, right? Where mm -hmm. we, have to, we have to address it. It's not just about an equal playing field. It's about understanding that there are some communities that have borne the brunt of societies, uh, you, know, uh, you know, whether that's we, you know, I think about transportation system or the housing system. It's, you know, we, you know, it's no surprise to me when I'm at Boston Medical Center and the patients that I see, what neighborhoods they come from, the issues that they have, these are all patterns, you know, it's not random. It's not random that when I take care of a gunshot wound, it is almost every time a young black or brown male, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. These aren't random. And that's why we need to do something about it at the political level. And I'm committed to doing that. And that's what I've been fighting for. And I'm very honored for the past two years, I've taken the stories of my patients and taken them to Beacon Hill to fight for them. And we've had some successes, whether that's, you know, passing a distracted driving uh, rule or, or law, or whether that's making sure that, you know, we put some significant restrictions on flavored vaping. Um, but again, in the COVID-19 era, we've done a lot to really make sure that in, in my work that we're, get, we're, we're working to make sure that those underserved communities get the care that they deserve uh, because, you know, as you know, Krishna, if you're black or brown, you're three, three to four times more likely to be infected, you're more likely to get intubated, you're more likely to be hospitalized, and you're more likely to die. And that's not right. And that's not random, you know. That's because a whole host of reasons that we need to address. You know, I think about Chelsea, for instance, you know, that's been the epicenter of the COVID-19 pandemic here in Massachusetts. You know, these are communities suffering from high levels of asthma, where their families are essential workers, they have to go to work. They have to take public transportation. And, you know, it's about addressing, again, the root causes of those issues to make sure that we have a healthier community. Yes, thank you so much. So, and how do you plan to develop more equity and opportunity in your platform for office and in your administration? Should you be the elect mayor? <laughs> well, I think that starts with having an administration that reflects the city of Boston, not just in terms of of gender or class, but that of race as well, right? You know, the people on the ground know what's going on in their respective communities. You know, I'm a big believer in, in uh, what, what an American physician once said, listen to the patient, they will give you the diagnosis, right? And so I think the more voices that we have that are in government 
from those communities, whether they're participating in boardrooms or, or, or certain activities or certain task forces, the more that they're engaged, the more that they're involved, the better we will be for it, you know? Um, and so that's my, you know, that's what I've done in, in the medical field, you know, at Boston Medical Center, we have a place right now where, you know, we've, we've done a good job expanding, um, having, you know, uh, minority doctors in the emergency room, right? And you can tell that when the patients, you know, when they interact with someone who looks like them, who talks like them, who shares their same language, that does something, you know, that, 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 that increases the trust, that increases this, you know, the likelihood of getting a message across, of um, uh, really instilling that uh, necessary, uh, you know, confidence in order to, you know, break the barrier and, and, and treat the patient. And that's why I want government operating that well. Listen, we recognize that there are issues in this community that need to be addressed that have been too long standing. And I'm ready to go in there with an urgency, with a desire to get things done because that's what I've done my whole life as a Peace Corps volunteer, as a captain in the army, as an emergency room doctor, and now as a state representative. You know, we don't have time um, to sit around and I'm committed to do something about it. Yes, thank you so much for sharing all this with us. So John, the show is about to be at end. Thank you so much for being here, but I would like you to tell, to tell us like uh, what, inspires you what make you happy like every day so in boston what makes you awake so positive to go to your er and do a best service you know it's it's uh you know i, I work in a tough place in the emergency room i'm involved in politics which in boston it can be tough but you know i'm i'm a i'm just a relentless optimist you know and i believe in people and i believe that the world can be a better place because i've seen it in my own eyes i've seen it in my patient interactions i've seen it in my work abroad I just believe in people and I believe that we have so much untapped potential, but we just have to unleash it and we have to provide the opportunities, you know, for those kids and, and, and for those families uh, to get involved, to take a role in shaping their own lives. And, and that's what I'm committed to doing as um, the next mayor of Boston. Thank you so much for sharing that. So John's believe in you. I believe in you. We all believe and we are empathizing what you are facing right now. So please think wisely and uh, vote for this man. <laughs> so John, thank you so much for being here on my show. Thank you all the viewers for watching Krishna International Magazine show. Thank you for our BNN team, amazing, in particularly Ashley, that is our director. Thank you everyone for watching. So tonight's show was the power of equity and opportunity and our, and our guest was John Santiago. Thank you so much for being here. John, thank you. Thank you, Krishna. Yes, have a lovely night.